Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's take a look at cleaning up your contacts. So chances are, over the years, you've accumulated a lot of contacts in your contacts app. Let's take a look at how you could clean up your contacts. Before doing any cleaning up, why not take the opportunity to back up your contacts? Then, if you make a mistake, you have a backup of that information. It's a good idea to do it from time to time as well. These contacts don't take up much space, so it's pretty easy to back them up and store them away somewhere. In the Contacts app on your Mac, you can go to File, and you can export. And one of the things you can do is export a Contacts archive. When you do that, you're going to get this one file here, and it's not going to be that big. Just store this away. It even has a date on it already. If you double-click it, it will actually ask if you want to import all of that into contacts. But that's not the only way to back up your contacts. You can back them up in a more universal format by first selecting all the contacts that you want to export. In this case, I've just selected all contacts here, so it's going to back up everything. Go to File, Export, and then Export as a V card. I'm going to get a file that's VCF format, which means you can actually import it on completely different systems. Rename it with the date and store it away. It also works if you simply drag and drop. I can drag all contacts here and I get the same thing. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacBoast at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. So now that you have a backup, you may feel a little more free to experiment with the contacts that you've got. One of the most common things people want to do in cleaning up their contacts is get rid of duplicates. And you can see a few here. Now, it's very important to understand why you have duplicates. And one of the most common reasons is something a lot of people don't think about. If you look at the left sidebar here, it shows you all of my accounts. If you don't see it, go to View Show Lists, and I'll show this over here. Notice I've got an iCloud account and a Gmail account. It's very common when setting up your email on your Mac or iPhone to add multiple accounts. And when you do that, it's also very common to not notice that you're not just adding email, you're also adding a contacts database. So in this case, I've added two contacts databases because I have two email accounts that I've added to my Mac. Now my iCloud account has most of my contacts in it. But my Gmail account, my Google account, also has some contacts in it. And you can see there's one here for this person, and there's also one here for this person in iCloud. So when I look at all contacts, which shows me both iCloud and Gmail and any others I may have, I see two for this person. So before you deal with the duplicates, you want to figure out exactly what you want to do with your contacts. Do you want to simplify everything and have all your contacts in one place? such as iCloud. I know that's how a lot of Apple users, myself included, like to do it. All of my contacts are on iCloud, and I don't use the contacts database in Google or other accounts that I may use. If that's the case, then you wanna to go to your other accounts here, like this one. And if you see a contact here that you want to move over to iCloud, you can do that. You can select it and drag it here, and it will export it from Google and import it into iCloud making a second copy of it here in iCloud. And then go to Contacts, Settings, and then go to Accounts. And here is where you could select an account, like there's that Google one, and I could disable it. This won't erase anything. It's all still going to be there in my Google account if I were to log in on the web, but it means that my Contacts app will no longer show this account, only the iCloud account, and that alone may actually get rid of any problem I have with duplicates. Now, another way to deal with duplicates is to leave the two accounts here, but link contacts together. I've got these two accounts here. I can select one and then command click to select the other and select both contacts. And I can go to card, link selected cards. When I do that, notice I end up with one card here. And when I select it, I could see it says cards and it shows that there are two of them, a Gmail one and an iCloud one. I click the Gmail one, I see the Gmail one, I click the iCloud one, I see the iCloud one. But here in contacts, when I view all contacts, it just shows me this person one time with all of the information from the cards I have linked combined together. I should warn you that in some situations, when you link two cards like that from separate accounts, a minute or so later, you'll see the two of them 
separate again. So this happens when one of the two cloud accounts kind of rejects the link and just reasserts itself as a separate card. In that case, linking the two cards isn't really going to be an option. You're probably going to want to take the information you want to save from the second card and then add that to the first card and just have one card in whichever account you want as your primary contacts database. Now, there's also another scenario. Notice I have these two cards right here. These two cards are both in iCloud. If I go to iCloud, I could still see them. So for some reason, I created the second card for the same person without realizing they had this first card. When I select both of these at the same time and I go to card, I'm not going to see the ability to link. Instead, I'm going to see merge selected cards. Since they're both iCloud cards, I can merge them together, adding the information from one to the other so that it's all combined into one card. And in fact, you can do this automatically. If you've got a lot of contacts with this problem, there is actually an option here under card, look for duplicates, and it will find duplicates and allow you just to merge them all in one go. So the next thing you may want to do is to actually remove some of the contacts here. Now, there may be contacts that you just want to remove forever. You are absolutely sure you won't need them anymore. And you can do that by selecting them and then going to edit and delete card if you wish, or you can just select it and then press the delete key and it will delete it. But an alternative to doing that is to archive the card. To do that, you can just select the card like this and drag it to a finder window. Like I'm just going to drag it here to the desktop, but you may want to create a folder somewhere and you could just as easily drag into there. I'll just move this one in here. Notice if I select the contact, I can press the space bar and it will actually show me the contact information. I can use it just like I could in the contacts app. I could also just add it back to contacts and you could just archive these, get them out of your contacts app, delete them after you archive them and know that you still have it saved somewhere, but it's not going to get in the way when you just want to look through your contacts to find somebody. Another thing you may want to consider is sometimes not storing contact information in contacts. For instance, you may want to create a note that has information like names, phone numbers, email addresses, and such for people that are handymen or electricians or plumbers or anybody that works on your home. Put that all in one note, easy access. It's easy to add information to it. And when somebody needs recommendations, you can just send them the entire thing. Or perhaps if you get a list of 20 names and phone numbers for a group at work or your organization or school provides a list of names of contact information, you can put that in a note and keep it out of your contacts. Now, another thing you may want to do is tidy up your lists. I don't have any lists here, but it's easy to create a list and you can easily add people to these various lists, put them in multiple lists and all of that. Lists are easy to create, easy to delete, and easy to alter. Just because you create one for a purpose doesn't mean you need to keep it around forever. Remember, the contacts aren't in this list. It's kind of like a playlist in music or an album in photos. All the contacts are here in your main database. This is just a way of viewing a subset of those. So I can select one and then go to edit, delete list, and delete it. And those people are still here in my main list. So if you feel these are creating a lot of clutter, then maybe just get rid of them. They don't actually get rid of the contacts. And if they're not useful to you right now, get rid of them. You could always recreate them. Now let's talk about the contacts themselves. When you're viewing a contact, you may want to clean it up. To do that, you would go into edit mode. And here is where you could add or remove items. So you can remove items that you don't need anymore by using the minus button right here. You can add things if they're already listed, and even if they're not, you can click the plus button and add all sorts of different fields here. Don't forget, you also have the note at the bottom where you can add all sorts of miscellaneous things, and that's searchable too. So when you search, if the term is used here in the note, it will come up. A few tips to make each individual contact more useful. First of all, when a person is mainly a contact of yours because of the company they work for, consider checking the company button and then typing the company name here. For instance, if this person is an accountant and they just happen to be your current contact at the company where you do your taxes, you could put the name here and that's what will appear here on the list. You could still have their name here, but when you're assigned a new contact person, you can simply update that by changing the name, changing the phone number and leaving the company alone. 
And you can see when I do this, now they appear here under the name of the company, which is what I may be looking for more than the person's name. If the person often goes by a different name and you find that when you search for them or maybe even ask Siri to make a phone call or something like that, you're using a name that isn't listed anywhere here, you can add the nickname field. The nickname field allows you to type something else here, a nickname or something else you may call them. For instance, for your spouse, you may want to say wife or husband, put it under nickname, and then you can use that for searches or for voice commands. Also, of course, pay attention to the picture here because the picture is what's going to come up in lots of situations, including when you get a phone call from that. But look at your photos. And then you could select from a photo and you can even scale and adjust the photo and then save. So if you have a photo of them anywhere in your photos library, you could easily add it as the photo for them in the contacts app. Oh, and one last tip here, it's going to have an entry for ringtone. So you could set a custom ringtone that will work on your iPhone when they call. You can go to the default, so they just use whatever your default ringtone is. But you can also go all the way to the bottom and select none. So basically what you've done is you've silenced this one person. It'll still ring, you'll still see the call showing up on the screen, but there won't be any audible ring to it. And also note, you could set a text tone as well. Now, an important thing to keep in mind when cleaning up your contacts is you don't need to do them all at once. I often hear people describe cleaning up their contacts as seeming like an overwhelming task. There's no reason it needs to be. You don't have to do it all at once. You could do just a few a day, spend five minutes a day, and after a few days or weeks, eventually all of them will be cleaned up. So now that you've gotten rid of duplicates, archived and deleted contacts you don't really need, and cleaned up individual contacts, you wanna make it easier to create new contacts in the future. When you go to create a new card, it can kind of be overwhelming to have all of this here. And some of it you may hardly ever use. Go back to contacts settings, and then go to template. And this template is exactly what you get when you create a new contact. So get rid of things that you really don't enter, especially if you don't enter them when you initially create a contact. Like you don't have to have social media here, maybe not the birthday, maybe not homepage. But if there's something else that you find you always add, you could go into here and you could add it for them to the template. So now that you've gotten a simple template here, when you go to create a new card, that's basically what's going to be here. There can be a few other things there as well, like the ringtone and text tone. You can always click the plus button and access all of these different fields so you can still add everything. It's just not gonna hit you with a huge form when you first create a new contact. So I hope this helps you clean up your contacts and keep them clean moving forward. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.